thanks. Um, this is a really interesting book. Um, I think it really usefully highlights the importance of um, the inequalities between groups rather than inequalities between individuals, which I think we hear about a lot more. And also this, this fact that, that Francis's presentation was touching on about the differences or similarities between perceptions of inequalities and, and actual inequalities. Um, so I just had five sort of questions or comments. Um, the first one was about um, <coughs> class, and I was a bit surprised that there was no real explicit mention of class, particularly in the theoretical framework, um, given that horizontal inequalities talk about inequality of opportunity, both political and in terms of access to services. So I wondered why class wasn't a component of identity in the same way that ethnicity, religion, um, and region were talked about as, um, particularly, I guess, given the lack of social mobility in a lot of these places. And I, I gather that a lot of people would understand class as a, as a, hor as a sorry, vertical inequality. But I guess my sense is that, that, that class is not just a, an issue of wealth, but also you know, a, a profoundly sort of cultural um, dimension as well. And so, so I wondered if there was a reason for it not being included there. And I note that it did come act up actually in the South Africa, Zimbabwe case study as an important factor there. Um, the second point was about the relationship between formal and informal political systems. So the book talks about how socio socioeconomic horizontal inequalities can be very slow to change, but that political horizontal inequalities can actually you know, quite rapidly change, particularly in transition periods like, like the end of conflict. And one thinks of that sort of thing about um, you know, quotas for female parliamentarians or you know, changes to, to land uh, rights and so on. But for me, that raised the question a little bit of the extent to which such changes in political horizontal inequalities um, are sort of really meaningful, because I guess often a lot of those political changes can be seen to be quite tokenistic or thin and not really um, connected to these sort of deeper changes that, that make them meaningful. So I wondered how you see these changes in political horizontal inequalities connecting to you know, that more genuine change that, that makes them um, more meaningful. I also wondered a little bit about the classification of, of countries, um, certainly in the first chapter, between into sort of power dispersing and power concentrating categories, um, and whether this ends up privileging a bit of a focus on these formal political systems rather than the ways in which politics actually happen. Now, I think the case studies um, you know, get around this to some extent, but it struck me when reading that chapter, for instance, that, that you know, Ethiopia is listed as a power dispersing country, and, and on paper that, that's true, but obviously most people would argue that the real political decisions in that country are, um, are in fact you know, happening in a very closed and centralised system. Um, so yes, as I say, the case studies I think unpack this a little bit, um, but I wonder whether there is a bias sort of built into that, that approach that, um, that is looking more at that formal system rather than the way things work. Um, the third point I had was about whether decentralisation is always the best way to, to prevent conflict. So the book obviously points to this as, as an effective way um, to prevent conflict, which I think might be true, particularly in the long <coughs> term. But I was interested to hear more about the politics of the process of, of decentralization. So in Sierra Leone, for instance, they've, the government's brought in a policy of decentralization since 2004. Um, but rather than that really being about you know, giving power to the people um, in a way that sort of might help to alleviate um, horizontal inequalities, it's actually, or people often talk about it, is actually just creating another layer of rent seeking that's even closer to their everyday lives. And so it's actually almost more of an obstacle than anything else. Um, so I guess, yes, it would be interesting to hear about the process by which that sort of decentralization changes to be, to be a more positive force. Um, I also thought that the nature of decentralization talked about in the book seems to be one that reinforces you know, ethnic differences rather than trying to play them down and say, no, 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 we're all you know, whatever nation. It sort of encourages accepting and embracing you know, th this sort of ethnic diversity. And again, I was struck by, you know, in Ethiopia, obviously the opposition parties there sort of reject this idea of Ethiopia, of um, ethnic federalism, and see this as actually potentially very divisive and say that no, it should be, you know, unifying the country on, on the basis of, of national identity rather than, you know, uh, sort of bringing up the fact of all these, these ethnic differences. And I just wondered if this was something that came up in other case studies um, and whether it's a potential challenge to this idea of decentralization as, as being the best place to prevent conflict. Um, my fourth question was just a quick one about whether you found certain aspects of identity were more or less volatile than the others. So the identity groups that the book, that the book depicts um, as being sort of subject to horizontal inequalities center around ethnicity, religion, and region. And I wondered whether you know, inequalities between one of these aspects tends to be more volatile <coughs> than, than any of the others, and whether you could say something about that. 
Um, and then the final question was just actually around uh, how this feeds into the post-2015 framework. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about inequality, but I wondered whether those debates um, are getting at some of the things that come out in the book around perceptions of inequalities and about inequalities of groups um, rather than individuals. Thank you.